Welcome to. <laughs> oh, okay. That got a little louder, dude. <laughs> um, we we do have a new sound system today, so um, um, we'll see what. <laughs> you know, it sounds like it's it looks like it's working by the look on her face. I so <laughs> I think it's working. Um, yeah, you've been seeing, and we also, and it's I think it's also changed the the appearance of the screens. Isn't that part, wasn't that part of it, Paul? I don't know. Anyway, it's, you've been seeing announcements uh, like uh, helping to move the tables after the service and volunteers for the preschool trip or trip, trip or, boy, if, you, if I could speak this would be so much easier. <laughs> the preschool trick or treat. Yeah, I got that one out. Um, and then I was, I got a, a uh, a text from Debbie Marshall, and she said to make a specific request for help uh, for people to sign up uh, to help with the craft fair and to uh, be a part of the bake sale. So you know, bring things for the uh, bake sale at the craft fair. So I think that pretty well covers it. Uh, are there any other announcements? Okay. Well, then let's rise and greet one another. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Our opening hymn for this morning is number 906, O Day of Rest and Gladness.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you pray and forgive my sins. Oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you for your mercy, and for the sake of the whole innocent citizens of this and that, the Lord of the Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, our confession. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I can give us all forgive assurance that our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. be with you. Let us pray. Amen. Lord, we ask you to be with us this day. Lead us, guide us, speak to us, speak through us to one another. As we worship together, as we come together united in you, we thank you, Father, that we could be here today. In Jesus' name. Please be seated for our Old Testament reading. (laughs) 
The Old Testament reading is from Ecclesiastes chapter 5. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much, but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There is a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his hurt, and those riches were lost in a bad venture. And he is father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is there to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all his days he eats in darkness, in much vexation and sickness and anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun, the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth, possessions, and power to enjoy them, and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life, because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from the book of Hebrews. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, Again, he appoints a certain day. Today, saying through David so long afterward, in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest, he also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the tenth chapter. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. 
It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under conscious power, was crucified by the Holy Spirit. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And then she will come to death to live in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon hymn is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, number 649.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you today about rest, what it is to rest. And we all need rest, and we all like to get rest. And um, rest is a gift, uh, a gift that God gives us. And Imagine someone offering you a gift like that, a gift that you can't get on your own, an incredible gift. This is a gift to end all gifts, and you decide to refuse. And you say, you know, no, I, I don't need it. It's okay, but, you know, I'm, I'm good on my own. I think I'll pass. Well, that's some of what we see going on today. Um, today's reading, and from Hebrews, that's what that's all about. The people of Israel refused to go into the promised land, and God's response was, they shall not enter my rest. These folks, they've been slaves, they've gotten a good taste of harshness in the world, and yet they refused to go into a land where they would have rest. Well, today, God offers us rest. Rest through the forgiveness of sins. And uh, and that's a gift. It's an incredible gift. And But the question is, do we sometimes get so caught up in the things of the world that we miss the gift? We miss the opportunity to rest as God intended. Today, we have the three readings frequently in the lectionary. You have three readings, and we find, we we struggle to find a connection. They don't seem to have a thread. In this case today, they have a very distinct thread woven through them. And the thread that's woven through them is the danger of being so consumed by what's going on around us. Perhaps our own labors, our own success, so consumed that we miss God's place in this. And with that, of course, the rest that he offers us. Our first reading is from Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to take the liberty of moving back to the beginning of Ecclesiastes, and I want to get a clear picture of where, paint a clear picture, rather, of where this writer is coming from. Um, He begins, Solomon begins with words like this. He said, I tried everything and it was meaningless. It made, it just didn't make any sense. It was all meaningless, utterly meaningless. He said everything was meaningless. And he writes that. I mean, you can almost feel the passion of this guy writing these words. And then we move on a little bit, and he tells us more about it. Listen to these words. I said to myself, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is madness. What does pleasure accomplish? I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly, my mind still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was good for people to do under the heavens during the few days of their lives. I undertook great projects, he says. I built houses for myself, and I planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers, and a harem as well, the delights of a man's heart. 
I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all of this, my wisdom stayed with me. What we have here <clears throat> is the story of an old man. He's nearing the end of his life, and, and he has spent his life searching for meaning and wisdom beyond his... And, and he's frustrated because all of the stuff that he did, all these things that he's accomplished, has given him nothing. And he searches endlessly, looking for satisfaction and the joy of knowing, of being able to rest, no matter the struggle. He's missed that because he missed God being there. And then he gives us these words from today's text. He says, Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun for the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to employ them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. The old king wrote the story so that we could see his frustration, so that he could show us how foolish he had been up to the point that he learned to rest in God. I, uh, I discovered Ecclesiastes back in a seminary class. We, we discover things in the Bible, I think. It's, it's been there, but then we look at it and go, oh my gosh, this just kind of hit me right between the eyes and I didn't realize that it said that. And so I discovered it. Um, <clears throat> I was captivated, captivated by the words that he wrote. I studied it. I wrote papers on it. I went back to read again and again and the story has always kind of drawn me in because I question, was I that person? Was that me? Oh, I, I, I wasn't a king and I didn't have great wealth. But did I get focused on the wrong thing at times? Had I become so driven by the demands of this world that I too, had missed the gift. Maybe we all have, to some extent, at some point in our lives, consumed by the next goal or the next gift that we forget about resting in God. You know, if you think of it, if you think back through our lives, after some training, of some kind, perhaps college or trade school or some kind of training, we enter the workforce ready to take on the world and begin our life. And so it begins. A lot of new things enter in and come at us. A job, and with the job there are new demands and responsibilities we have, and then there are bills to pay, and car and a place to live and then perhaps marriage and maybe with marriage children and then the demands increase and then maybe there's a new opportunity a better job perhaps maybe a move to another place another town and a house and on and on and we get busy and we find ourselves overwhelmed at times. And, uh, and don't we at times like that kind of cry out like Solomon did and say, what in the world am I doing? Is I, I'm going crazy here. Does, is there meaning to what I'm doing here? 
I thought it was going to be smoother or easier or better or more fun or something, maybe more meaningful. But it goes deeper, doesn't it? The cover of our worship folder today does not push the idea of being meaningful or smoother or better or fun. Instead, we see the word rest. Those who believed enter that rest, is what we find. Entering God's rest. Listen to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God has things for us to do. And he is also the one who calls us to rest. Think of it this way. In this place of trusting God and resting in him, we experience the joy of creativity, of getting things done, and stress and anxiety are minimized. That is not to say that we don't get frustrated and get overwhelmed at times, but the joy the joy of resting in God, that joy that passes all understanding, is a part of our lives. A sense of calm and laughter, even amidst the trials, are the marks of someone who is resting in God. The rest is not the idea that activity just stops, and sometimes it needs to, but it continues because there is peace, peace within the job at hand. Well, Jesus ties up this whole idea of a quest for more in our gospel lesson when he raises the caution by, about wealth with these words. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were pretty amazed at his words. And, and Jesus, he said to them again, he said, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God the disciples were pretty astonished by this, and we perhaps should be as well. Um, you know, we think about this. The, uh, there is, there is a, a kind of a myth that's been a part of, of the Christian world for a long time, and it, 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 the foundation is not solid for it. It probably didn't happen, but I'm going to, I'm going to share it with it because the, the myth, I think, has stayed alive because it paints a picture. And Jesus said it's easier to pass a camel through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get to heaven. Well, the story goes, and there is, there is a gate in Jerusalem that's very low and very tight, and the story is that that is the needle's eye, and he was talking about the fact that if a camel has burdens on his back, you can't, there's no way he can gallop through this. You know, he's got to stop and take the burdens off, and so should we, and, and then he goes under the, the gate. Well, that gate didn't exist when Jesus was saying this word, so, so it's, it's a myth, but it's a myth that's been going on for centuries because it paints a clear picture of our need to get rid of the burdens and rest in Christ. And so Jesus continues, and he said, and they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with man it is impossible, but not with God. 
because with God all things are possible. Think about it. An old man who after a long life of trying it his way eventually finds God and looks back and tells the story so that we might learn. And then there's another king, a guy by the name of David. And David tells us to listen. He said, listen to God. And when you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And finally, we have the Lord Jesus himself, who says, your way is not going to work. Look at the size of the eye of that needle. It's not going to work. It is impossible, our way. And he says, follow me. And he heads to a wooden cross that no one would have expected. And he gave us the only way. And so we trust. And we rest in the Lord. Amen. Please rise for our offertory. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we bring these gifts, Father, that you might use them, that the world might see a way to rest in you. Father, we thank you. We are blessed indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. As we, uh, as we pray this morning, uh, I was told that we have a uh, celebration to pray about as well. And the celebration is Charlie and Jan Miller are celebrating a 65th wedding anniversary on Friday. <laughs> Gracious, loving Father, Lord, we, uh, <clears throat> we thank you, Father. We... Uh, um, the chance to come together 
and worship together and celebrate together. We pray for one another and we celebrate with one another and the joy of the idea of this beautiful couple in 65 years of marriage is a blessing indeed. A rest, Lord, and uh, <clears throat> they have they have worked and and united and rested in you, and that is a blessing. Father, we we do thank you. We thank you for all that we have in you, Father. We pray this morning for uh, for this church, Lord. We we think of this church and the call committee and then the struggles of finding the one that would come to minister to us, to lead us into the future. And so we, uh, <laughs> the word rest comes to mind. We pray that they find a place of rest in the job at hand that they rest in you, that they feel your presence, that they feel your guidance as they, as they do this work that is so important for the future of the church. Father, be with them, lead them, guide them, and give them encouragement and confidence as they, as they move ahead with the task at hand. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray today for, um, for our country, for the world. We, once again, we approach an election and, and there is, uh, it's a time that frustrates us all as we hear people berating one another and uh, so give us Give us wisdom, Father, the wisdom that comes from knowing and trusting you of making the decision and give us rest from the bombardment that we seem to be receiving with this over the next days, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and again, the wisdom to make the right decision. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we do pray that you raise up leaders, not only in our country and the world, that would, would turn back to you. We prayed that this morning as we prayed before the service, that <clears throat> the world needs you, Father. And we pray that the leaders would be leaders that would recognize you and that would turn to you and be guided by you. It is important in our world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray for all in our church and in, in our families who are sick, who are hurting, who are struggling. We think again this morning as of, of Liz as she continues. We pray this morning again for Fran as she's healing from her fall. Father, there are so many to pray for. We, <clears throat> we think of Carolyn and we think of Virginia. Father, we are, we are blessed. Again, that we can come to you and we, and we pray for healing and we pray for comfort and we know that you listen. We know that you hear our prayers. So, Father, we just thank you for that. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, spare the servants of your church from the love of wealth and from the fear of difficulty in their task, that they would gladly set aside every comfort for your sake and for the gospel. Give them a rest, Father, a rest that can only come from you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, your Son left his earthly home to do his saving work. And so he knows what it is to leave a family behind. 
Comfort your children who have left home and loved ones for the sake of the gospel. Set them firmly into the family of the church and sustain them in the hope of eternal life in the age to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, as we rise with the words he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, number 918. told to stay up here at the end of the service <laughs> and so
He came as a retired pastor, and then but God had some other plans, and you ended up filling in for Pastor Gallagher's son, and now it's Pastor Miller, and you're the head guy. <laughs> but we do assure you that our call committee is working hard. <laughs> we're praying for them. <laughs> You know, it's it's it's. I mean, it is funny. I, I of course, I worked with Pastor Miller, and um, I still can picture that. I, you know, it was one of the first times that I visited here, and out in front of Nicole's desk, I, I Pastor Miller was. I think he was talking to Betsy, and and I walked up to say something to him, and he turned on. He said, "Jack," he said, "Could you help me?" He said. You know, we, we've got some shut-ins that need visiting and communion. Would you, would you be willing to help with that? I said, yes. <laughs> Never imagined <laughs> where that yes was going to lead me, but it is, it is an honor and a blessing to be able to serve this church, and, and certainly, I, you know, I, I, I pray as well, and I will be very happy when we, when we get a pastor, but... But, you know, the idea of, of resting in the job, um, you know, when, uh, when you see the joy on, on faces and, and you gather with, the, with your church family to worship on Sunday morning, you can't not rest in that love. And so thank you all for your, for your love and for putting up with me, and, and uh, it's, it is a joy. Thank you. <laughs> 